WBTV, covering breaking news live. More reporters on the important stories live. Tracking your first alert weather live. WBTV News live at 5 starts right now with the first alert weather day. So this evening, we do want to start with our forecast. We're looking at our second night in a row of freezing temperatures throughout the area tonight and into the morning. In fact, as you can see, we're taking a live look from Buckeye Lake. Snow falling throughout the day up there in the Avery County area. You can still see uh, some of the snow on the ground there. Take a look at that. And those freezing temperatures are what our meteorologists issued our first alert weather days for today and tomorrow. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Siobhan Bryan. And I'm John Carter. We want to bring in meteorologist Rachel Coulter right now. And Rachel, these freezing temperatures are expected to stick around for what almost 12 hours right yeah that's right and then we're gonna see them again so tonight tomorrow night and then potentially even as we head towards the end of the next upcoming weekend and into the start of next week we're gonna have another opportunity for seeing some of those below freezing temperatures so our first alert weather days do continue looking at that freeze warning in place right now for Mecklenburg County out towards Alexander County this does include portions of the foothills as well so it does not include the mountains not because you don't have that cold freezing temperatures on the way but it's because that growing season hasn't gotten underway just yet let's talk about tonight's low temperatures and more details this is your actual low temperatures waking up around 19 degrees in Boone, 26 for Charlotte, 27 south and east of the Charlotte Metro. But notice what happened. So even though we're going to be below freezing, again, heading out the door Thursday morning, by Friday, we're waking up to the 40s. And our afternoon high temperatures are actually going to be pretty close to the 70 degree mark Thursday and Friday afternoon. So we have some pleasant afternoons ahead. We just have to get through a couple of these freezing starts before we get there. So temperatures right now in Charlotte after reaching right around 50 degrees. Now in the 40s, feeling like the low 40s because of those breezy conditions. We've got 40s on the map in several spots across the Charlotte Metro, but it's 28 degrees right now in the mountains, feeling like the teens already. I'm going to walk you through those freezing nights ahead, talk about when we'll see some relief and when the next rain chances return coming up. All right, thanks, Rachel. We're live at 5. Our message is going to be um, please help us out. I'm very thankful. I thank God that we were able to find this young girl. Uh, it may not be that case forever. Well, a terrifying situation out of Davidson County this week as a 13-year-old girl declared missing from Dallas, Texas, was found this past weekend in a locked shed more than a 1,000 miles away. Deputies say the teenager met her alleged abductor, Jorge Camacho, online and then in person. The Davidson County Sheriff's Office worked with the FBI to track down where the teen and suspect were and eventually were able to find the girl in a locked out building on the Camacho's property. Now the girl's been taken to a hospital for treatment. She is back home with her family. And this disturbing case in Davidson County also highlights one of the reasons our area is number one spot in North Carolina for human trafficking. So the state says the interstate highways are frequently used to traffic children and not for the obvious reasons that you might think of. Of. WBTV's David Wisnett has been looking into this. So, David, what does law enforcement say about this? Well, Siobhan, you have some, some obvious things, like you know you can get up and down the road a lot faster if you're on the interstate, and also you're less conspicuous, less likely that you're going to get pulled over. But that could change as more attention is now being paid to just exactly what is going up and down these roads. The area between Charlotte and Greensboro is a hotspot for human trafficking, according to the state of North Carolina and local law enforcement. North Carolina, we're ranked ninth in the United States for human trafficking. Um, the three major areas, the number one is the Charlotte region. The case in Davidson County that was reported yesterday shows how prevalent these cases are and how they can cover many miles. Let's face it, you have to get these individuals somewhere and um, you're probably not going to fly a human trafficking victim. So if you are trafficking someone, you're going to have to drive, you're going to have to be on the road. But we definitely see a steady influx of trafficking cases here at the Child Advocacy Center. Aaron Moody from the Terry Hess House Child Advocacy Center in Salisbury is seeing more victims of human trafficking and trying to help each one, no matter where they come from. We focus on the initial appointments, which are forensic interviews and medicals, but we have so many important services that come after that, which really helps children make their own meaning of a traumatic experience and figure out where do they want to go from here and how can we support them in getting there. And they use you and then just like sell you or like 
send you with their other friends. These are actual victims we spoke to several weeks ago. They're getting help all because their family was diligent to report suspicious activity. Moody says that's something everyone needs to do. If you have a concern, that's all you need to have to alert authorities and they will look into it for us. We all have good children. They're, they're, they're good kids. They're our kids but they can all fall prey to a very manipulating individual. Really good advice there. Aaron Moody also says you should not associate human traffic with any particular group within society. She says that from her experience, it can happen anytime, anywhere to just about anyone. And it's made even easier with the ease of communication now online, particularly among young people. Reporting live in Rowan County, David Wisnant, WBTV, on your side. Debunking those preconceived notions definitely helps us all be better at looking out for it. David, thank you. Live at 5, two people in jail today after deputies recovered guns, drugs, and cash while they were in a convenience store parking lot. The Rowan County Sheriff's Office says Jordan Moore and Kayla Wall, they're on your screen right now. They were both arrested in the parking lot of a Circle K convenience store in Granite Quarry on Monday. Deputies say Moore had an outstanding warrant for his arrest already, and when they talked with Wall, they noticed the smell of marijuana coming from the car. Deputies searched the vehicle, found methamphetamine, cocaine, marijuana, MDMA, along with three handguns and $800 in cash. Moore is currently being held on a $500,000 bond. Wall is being held on a more than $60,000 bond. And Rock Hill police say a man's in the hospital this evening after he tried to set things in his apartment and himself on fire. Officers say they were called to Flintwood Drive after receiving calls about a man being disorderly. When officers arrived, they went to the man's apartment where they found where they found he was experiencing a mental health crisis. He poured gasoline on items in the apartment and on himself. The items were reportedly lit on fire. The first responders were able to put out those flames and take the man into custody. He was taken to Piedmont Medical Center. He's currently undergoing a mental health evaluation. Well, now police in Lenore are asking for help identifying a man who they say robbed a bank. It happened Monday. Lenore police say it happened just after 9 a.m. at the Truist Bank on Mulberry Street. Police say the man handed a note to the teller demanding an undisclosed amount of money. The note said he had a weapon, but no weapon was seen. Police say the robber is a short white man with green eyes wearing all black with a face mask. Anyone with information is asked to call police. And right now, police in Matthews need your help searching for a man who disappeared more than two months ago. Brandon Trivet was last seen at the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral on Monday, January 9th. That's on East Boulevard near Winthrop Avenue. Police say he was last seen wearing a dark colored hat with ear flaps, a dark colored winter coat, black sports pants, and a light blue UNC Tar Heels watch. Now, Trivet suffers from cognitive issues and uses a wheelchair because his right leg has been amputated. Now, call 704-847-5555 if you know anything that could help. Today, North Carolina's Supreme Court heard two cases it's already ruled on but could backtrack on its original decisions. It's rehearing, redistricting, and voter ID cases. So the redistricting case has since traveled to the U.S. Supreme Court to determine what authority state courts will have on how state legislators decide election rules. Last year, the state Supreme Court struck down a congressional map that was drawn by Republican legislators, ruling it as, quote, unconstitutional partisan gerrymander. However, the state flipped to a Republican majority with last year's elections. The second case involved a ruling that originally struck down a GOP-passed voter ID law. At the time, the court said it was passed with the intention of discriminating against black voters. A bill moving through the South Carolina Senate now would ban Chinese and Russian companies from acquiring land in the state. Current law caps the amount of land a non-U.S. citizen can own at 500,000 acres. Well, this bill would cut the limit down to just 1,000 acres. The legislation would also ban any corporation owned by five countries classified as foreign adversaries to the U.S. There's a lot of concern about China's role in the world and how aggressive they have been and how those those actions have been adverse to the interests of the United States. So you're seeing lots of states taking action similar to this because of that concern. Senators amended the bill today to allow people who are citizens of these countries to acquire property if they're also dual citizens with U.S. or green card holders. 
So something that we've told you about multiple times recently now plagues a car dealership in New Hampshire. $250,000 worth of cars were stolen just this week. So the vehicles were stolen early Sunday morning. In total, four vehicles were driven right off the showroom floor. The general manager says one of the thieves was able to break in through an office window. They pried open the key box and uh, they had full access. So they found the keys to the initial vehicle that was in front of the doors. They started it up and drove it through the doors. So the four vehicles stolen, a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee, a Polaris Slingshot, a 2018 Land Rover, and a 2014 Dodge Charger. So you'll remember last week we told you about a similar theft. Look at this video from Cornelius when thieves broke into a dealership there and stole a gray Audi RS5 and a black Dodge Durango right off the showroom floor. This was last Thursday. If you know anything about these heists here at home or the people responsible, you're urged to call police. The Catawba College women's basketball team is making school history. The team just won the Division II Regional Finals. That is a first ever for the team. That was to Georgia Southwestern up in Salisbury to a packed house. The people hoping to see that historic moment. And they did. Catawba beat Georgia Southwestern 75 to 65. So they are the Southeast Regional Champs and will advance to the Elite Eight in St. Joseph, Missouri. That's their first ever appearance in the Elite Eight. Congratulations to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, an iconic part of Plaza Midwood was recently stolen right as it was about to be sold. Why the owner of the pop up trailer says it wasn't just any trailer. And right now, construction already underway for a new CMS high school. The impact the district says this will have on hundreds of families.